Jose Pelissa, you are head of investment strategy at MNG Real Estate. Thank you for joining us on BETV. I'm glad to be here. When we spoke earlier in the year, uh, you were reporting a release of pent up demand on Europe's commercial property markets. Uh, how have investors uh, acted over the last year as we hopefully uh, emerge uh, from uh, the COVID 19 crisis? Yeah, so recovery is indeed taking place, the economy is improving. Um, office take-up is almost at 2019 levels, particularly in places like Germany, the Netherlands, a little bit less so in Southern Europe. Um, investors are active. Um, investment activity is almost at 2019 levels. Um, but the type of investment is a bit different. So there is a lot of emphasis on logistics, a lot of emphasis on residential. And the key difference is that ESG is far more talked about now than a couple of years ago. Okay. Uh, and a big subject on the market this year uh, was obviously uh, inflation. Uh, it is on the mind of analysts and, uh, and investors alike at the moment. Uh, how do you see it affecting real estate markets uh, in Europe uh, in the coming months? This is a very interesting and important question. I am still uh, of the school that inflation is a temporary phenomenon and predominantly a US phenomenon that is driven by high savings, labor shortages and therefore wage pressures and supply chain disruptions. Um, in the US and partially in the UK, a lot of people have left the labor force, um, but less so elsewhere in continental Europe. So in France, for example, labor force participation is at a record level, uh, according to the last data. So, so wage pressures in France will be less than in the UK or the US. Now, how is it affecting property markets? I am not here to say that property is a hedge against inflation because of course it is not on a year on year basis, but over the long term, it can help. But in order to do that, you need to have a competitive portfolio that fosters tenant tension. In other words, that your space is good enough so that more than one tenant want it, pushing rents up and therefore um, allowing you to be able to pass on part of that inflation to your tenants. Mm, okay. Uh, and 2021 obviously was a year with a lot of change. You talked about it. Uh, uh, different sectors uh, emerged as the, let's say, more popular option for investors. Uh, some considerations, you mentioned ESG, uh, that have come to the forefront of, uh, of the, the debate surrounding commercial property. Um, what trends or issues as we close out uh, this year and look into the next, uh, uh, do you see, um, do you think uh, investors should keep it, uh, their eyes for, for, uh, for 2022? I think there are three key uh, things that investors should keep their eye on. Number one, the re real estate portfolios in 2030 will look very different to real estate portfolios in 2020. Mm. This means that a lot more, um, let's call it non-classic real estate will be part of those portfolios. So less office, retail and industrial and more residential and more operational real estate sectors such as data centers, life sciences, um, forestry, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the first point. The second point is ESG. ESG is going to be a big consideration of investment decisions. And uh, therefore, a lot of work needs to be done in looking at our portfolios and making sure that they are fit for the future, given all the massive regulations that are coming uh, particularly at a European level. Mm -hmm. And then finally, from a cyclical perspective, there is the point of pricing. Mm. Pricing is steep and therefore at a point where pricing is steep and there is a lot of demand for real estate, it is very easy to embark in search for yield. That needs to be avoided because otherwise many people will get their fingers burnt. Mm -hmm. Sorry about the English expression. 
<laughs> no, but uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, obviously, uh, I would like to 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 keep more, but to keep you more uh, longer. But the, that's all the time we have. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your insight and for your time. And uh, thank you all for joining us. See you soon on Bay TV. Thanks for inviting me.